right, welcome everybody to episode 28 of the Content Lab podcast. Today we're joined by Anthony K. Doe. Anthony's a documentary filmmaker and photographer. He's original from Alberta, Canada, but we'll talk about a little bit how he doesn't actually have a, a home base right now. He just travels around the world just doing cool stuff. Um, just to name a couple of his past clients, he's worked with uh, Thor from um, The Mountain. Some people know him as the world's strongest man. And Tio Lopez, that's actually how we met um, a couple of weeks ago, which is the, uh, Pat, I think, five times world champ, boxing that's, world champ, that's which right. is uh, pretty cool. We'll talk a little bit about how we met too. But I, thank you so much, Anthony, for being here um, on the pod. Man, I'm hyped to be here. Let's get yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, let's talk about how we met. It's funny because um, I was in <laughs> Texas uh, shooting some stuff for, for the Butter Bros, for the rain um, the butter games, right? Butter games, yeah. And I remember, like, Tio was gonna be on, on set for I think it was the second day. So he shows up, and I see you, and I see you. I'm like, wait a second, I I know him from somewhere, but I I couldn't like I couldn't think about it. I'm like, I know him from somewhere. And then that same night we go to dinner. You sit next to me, and I I mentioned it to you. I'm like, um, Anthony, you 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 do look familiar. And you're like, yeah, you too. I don't know from where if we've shot in the past or something. <laughs> And then uh, something just clicked, and I remember that I was on a podcast with my friends, um, JD and Chris. And right. I think you were the guest before or after me. And then you were like, "Oh yeah, I remember that." Give me a second. Let me turn this light off. It's been, it's been messing around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to go. But yeah, that's how we met, and. And yeah, from there, I, I remember asking you, like, dude, you got to be on the pod. It's going to be really fun. So um, again, thank you for being here. Let's let's talk about you. Um, bring me back to you, you growing up and finding your passion for filmmaking and photography. Yeah, I um, like you said, I'm from Alberta and I was raised in a, a small little town outside of Edmonton. So Edmonton's like the big city for where I was raised. And then I was raised an hour away in this town with 15,000 people. And it was like a really Western town. Like everyone's a farmer and everyone plays hockey and everyone is uh, just lives one type of way, one type of lifestyle. And I kind of grew up like this anomaly kid that didn't really fit in anywhere. But um, I spent 24 years in this little town and uh, I never had traveled before and I never gone anywhere. And I never, um, my family didn't grow up traveling. We didn't like come for money or anything like that. And they didn't like to travel. So um, I was kind of under this rock for like 24 years. And then um, my story started when I just kind of booked a one-way flight to New Zealand one day and uh, just went by myself and didn't tell anybody, just kind of abruptly left my life behind and wanted to figure out what uh, I was made of. So I landed in Auckland and I just figured it out step by step. And, you know, one thing uh, to the next, I was meeting people. It was the first time I ever met people in the world. And um, I just remember after that first four or five weeks in New Zealand where I met people and I did an adrenaline activity every day, like jumping out of airplanes and black water rafting and white water rafting and all these crazy things. I just had like new eyes for life. And so I decided to come back to Canada and sell everything that I had, my place, my cars, all my clothes, everything to my name. And I just decided to put everything into a backpack that I could. And um, I set out into the world trying to figure out how I could stay out there because that's the only like version of me that I ever liked, right? So the camera never actually came till later, almost like seven months later down the road. Oh, so up until we're 24 years old, you didn't do any photography or, mm, no. or anything? No, I didn't even own a camera at that time. I Wow, that's cool. Yeah. How old are you right now? Uh, I turned 31 a couple weeks ago. Okay, 31. So yeah, like seven years ago. And what do you do up until 20? Like, what's your background? Uh, do you go to school? Do you... Yeah, so my where, background, where do you I work? Think when I graduated high school in my town, I think I did what most kids do at that time, which is like they're just itching to get out of the nest. And so I left to the big city and went to uh, post-secondary school and I tried my hand at uh, software engineering. And the only reason I went into software engineering is because the only thing I could think that I was good at was computers. And I wasn't even that good at computers. I was like average. But I was like, let's try software engineering. And I liked it. My grades were good, but I decided to drop out because my classmates were very like quite introverted, you know, like they were very like quiet gamers in their mom's basement kind of vibe and no one talked, no one communicated. And at that time I really craved like 
partying and social life and all this stuff. So I was like, no, this isn't for me. So I switched over to a different school, a different city, a different program. And I tried business because I wanted to meet more people. And I fell in love with investments at that time. There was this class called Stock Simulation. And I, you basically get 100,000 fake dollars to invest into the real market. And you compete against your classmates over a semester. And I topped my class and I really just fell in love with the markets. And then um, in my second year of business school, I had found someone that kind of bet on me and wanted to um, teach me how to invest in the real markets real time. So I got pretty good at that and I fell in love with it. So I put school on hold and I dropped out in my second, at the end of my second year, I was one credit away from finishing my second year basically. And I told myself and my mom that if I need to go back to school, then I will. But I never did. And I mean, the rest was history. I did investments. I had my own investment company for two years and then Come t- late 2015, uh, like in November-ish, um, a lot of things changed my life and my business partner wasn't around anymore. And uh, I had to kind of make a decision what I wanted to do moving forward. So I wish my inspiring New Zealand story started then, but it didn't. I think I just did that thing where every 20-year-old just drinks and parties their brains out and does nothing for a few months, just feeling lost. And then one day it just kind of clicked. And then next thing you know, I'm on an airplane to New Zealand. So that's super cool. Um, do you still do any investment and in stocks, crypto? And stuff? No, I'm, I'm completely out solely because um, I find that it's all consuming. Like it's very hard to be in it and be and not like, I don't like to divide my attention that way. It's, I, I find it's very easy to be not present. And so I think you're either in it and you want to play that game or you got to be out. Otherwise you're living your life and you're just thinking about numbers and tickers and all this other stuff. Right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about when you found photography that I found it super cool that, you know, you started when you were 24. And for those that haven't seen like Anthony's work, it's it's one of my favorite things to watch on Instagram. It's like, wow. it's really dope. Um, Thank you. I mean, I, I knew it was good what, because I remember like um, when, when the whole podcast thing, I just like did research on, on like the past guests of Chris and JD. And I remember like scamming through it. I'm like, oh, this is really good. But uh, w- once I met you and we had like a little conversation, I-, I have a little more like idea of like the way that you like your perspective, the way you th- you see things. Mm. It-, it almost made me appreciate a little more like your work. And uh, I was doing like, you know, like last night, I was just like scrolling through it. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Like, it's really good. So anybody that's listening, you need to after podcast is done, you need to go to Anthony's account, which is right there on the screens at Anthony K. Doe and just scroll through it listen to to the the music the sound while you're watching the videos it's really really cool uh but yeah back back to the back to the question uh 24 years old you buy your first camera or 25 24 25 years old somewhere in there yeah Yeah. i mean it all started i actually started with filmmaking i've always had a natural um take to just video because i think when youtube first came out what was that 2004 5 6 um Whenever the platform first came out and we didn't know what it was, I was already posting on there. I was taking a camcorder and making videos with my friends after school. And I've always seen the world in a filmmaking way. It's always been in mo- everything's in motion for me. So it all started with a video and it all started with the GoPro 2. I mean, when I was traveling, I had a GoPro with me. I didn't really know how to use it because I don't know. I mean, it's not that hard. It was simple enough. You turn it on, press the record button. I had all this GoPro footage and um, I learned how to make uh, my first film by opening my laptop, having two windows open at the same time. One was Premiere Pro and the other one was YouTube. And I just kind of figured out how to stitch together this video and it took me 10 hours. And that was the first time that like 10 hours felt like five minutes in my life. And I think that's what most people would describe as passion. That's so and, cool. yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, you 10 hours pass, you don't stand up, you don't drink water, you don't do nothing. It's just like you're in that zone. In it, yeah. yeah, and I stood up and I was like, wow, I never felt this before. And um, at the time, the video that I made, I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like, I can't believe I made this. Looking back now, it's an absolute trash video. But like, I loved it so much back in the day. And um, that was my whole, that first film was my whole New Zealand trip. It was like all the footage I bought from the adrenaline activities I did and then just random GoPro and cell phone footage. And I just mixed it together. And then um, I did that for a long time. Everything that I based 
uh, on my life moving forward after New Zealand was everything had to be close to the feeling of making my first film or the feeling that New Zealand gave me. And if it wasn't that, then I didn't want it or that person or that place. And I just keep moving forward. I was very black and white about it. And then it wasn't until maybe a few months down the road where photography entered because I think Instagram back then in 2016, it was, it was a good old days, you know, people were still posting for the simplicity of just posting random stuff with filters. And I was just posting photographs that I was um, taking from like my footage and stuff and people started seeing it and it was probably a little bit more vibrant than other things being posted and people started noticing and then they started seeing that I was making videos and then it just started taking off. But I started being recognized as a, more of a photographer as the years went on than a filmmaker because that's what Instagram was for so long, right? Absolutely. I don't think, even, I, I don't think Instagram had video until 2015, no. 14 maybe? Yeah, exactly. It and, was like a big deal. And it was like 10 seconds long. It was kind of like a Vine. Yeah. 10 seconds long. So yeah, yeah. for sure. Um. I like that you mentioned that you see life in a filmmaking way because when we met, uh, when we were at dinner, I remember you asked me like, what do you do more photography or videography? And I'm mm. like trying to explain like, well, it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And you're like, but what do you consider yourself? I'm like, I don't know. I think both. And you're yeah. like, okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. When you travel, when you see like the most beautiful thing you've seen, like a waterfall or something, a really awesome mm. landscape. Do you think about, I'm going to take a photo or I'm gonna record a video. You have and, a good memory. Yeah, and I was like, I mean, that's stuck in my head every time. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, think about it. Like, like, and and I said, I think I will take my camera and take a photo. And you said, yeah, I would, I will take a video. Like, I see yeah. it more of in a filmmaking way. I, I mean, and I'm like, I'm like, that's a that's an awesome way to like see it, like a cool perspective. So that that's still stuck in my mind. <laughs> I think that. I like that question because I like to oversimplify complicated things because that's not, I mean, life is not about oversimplifying things, but to better understand someone, you kind of got to put this like black and white question for entertainment purposes. And I've seen it enough times where like, you know, you have photographers and they look at filmmakers with like romantic eyes and then filmmakers look at like a photographer's style and they're, and everyone always like arrives at this beautiful destination and they wish they got more shots and footage and amazing stuff. And, It's just, um, I always found that people always wanted the other thing than they got, you know, they get the amazing photo, but they're like, oh, I wish I got the drone or the video. And then when they get the drone, the video, they're like, I wish I had like, a photo to post or something like that. So I always curious about where people sit on that spectrum because to, in today's world, everyone kind of wears both hats, right? And very like loose about the definition or the title of a photographer or a filmmaker. And I don't know, I just want to understand because I think it deep, Like if you're like a true filmmaker or a true photographer, your objectives and your eyes and your style are completely different for creation. You know, like, I mean, photography doesn't even include sound and sound is majority of filmmaking, right? Absolutely. How do you, um, I'm just trying to figure out like how, how you evolved to, obviously it seems like you, you were pretty passionate about it since, since the first time you made your first video, you're like, oh, this is cool. So obviously I could, I could tell that from there on you never stop, but How was that journey of like learning how to like make better videos? Like, do you, do you, at that point, do you have a mentor or somebody that helped you out? Mm. Do you go through YouTube and just kind of like search for everything? Just uh, run me a little yeah. bit through your. Yeah, I, I feel, I feel like I wish I could be one of those people that said like I had a mentor at the beginning. Cause you know, I always, you always hear about people's journeys and they had like, Oh, this person took me under their wing. And you know, I wish that was my story, but it wasn't my, my teacher, my mentor and um, everything was the university of YouTube, like just watching what other people did in, in my own, just like world and observing and or analyzing things. And I have a very, very obsessive and addictive personality. So I have to be careful about like, what I allow in and the, the good thing about filmmaking is like when I became obsessed with filmmaking, it's a good thing to kind of take over my life because um, all I wanted to do was make videos. I have, I don't really know how to articulate just how obsessed I was with making films. Anything, every, anything I would film every day, all the time, I have a camera up or I'm editing. I was just obsessed about it. And my mindset at the time was that the next video has to be something new or something slightly different or better than the last one, incremental improvements, you know? And when you do that, it's just textbook compound effect. And, you know, by your seventh or eighth video, it's going to be a lot better. And um, my mindset 
at the time because i mean the trends i don't know if you remember the trends at the in 2016 17 18 it was like transitions right it was like the zoom and the whoosh and all as many stuff. transitions as possible absolutely the seamless transition pack that everyone had yeah it was the beautiful destinations trend and um my time at that time was just like let's learn a new transition let's try to learn a new color grade let's let's try to find new sounds and video by video um it just kind of got better but i never saw it as like a market competition it was always like my my this video has to be better than my last video and i'm lucky that i had that mindset because i don't know where that came from and i think if i got stuck early comparing to everyone else around me i would have dropped it because it wouldn't have been fun and absolutely yeah yeah so you never thought about it as like oh this is gonna be my job it was always more like oh i love doing this like it's it's my passion i feel like filmmaking has been my bridge to like have my imagination come to the real world but also like anyone it's the only way that like it's the only language i have for, for people to like really see and hear who i really am so mm-hmm. it wasn't really like a choice to be a job it was a choice like i have to do this because it yep. it's the only way i can really express myself and if it was oh if it was taken away any day i i would just keep doing it you know the money was never uh, part of the equation at all it's kind of crazy even now just to think about making money doing something like this mm-hmm. yeah and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, your clients and how mm. you got to them because uh, that that's also something I was thinking last night. I'm like, um, you do a lot of like traveling and stuff, but how do you get to to like land some of these clients? Let, let's uh, let's go back to like your first client that you're like, hey, you know, like I need you to travel to this place and mm. and what you do pretty much is to document their their journey, either if it's like preparing for a for example, mm. like Tio, you were preparing, uh, he was preparing for one of his biggest fights since he lost mm-hmm. his championship, right? Yeah. Um, and then I imagine Thor was something like that too, like documenting yeah. his life and all that. So just take me back to like, hey, this was my passion. And then eventually it turned into something I can use to also, you know, help me financially and do what I love and travel and then meet mm. new people and all that. Yeah. So I think, you know, I really had to try to dissect this because... Um, when I tried to help my friends with their business, I really had to understand where my opportunities were coming from. And I think everybody has a different story there, but mine really revolved around the idea that on what we just talked about, filmmaking was never my business first. It, it was never a conscious decision to be like, oh, Anthony's going to be a filmmaker. Let's generate revenue and this stuff. My thing at the beginning, like it, with the New Zealand story, is that like it was travel first because my story began with like, oh, I like who I am on the road. Let's do this. And then filmmaking came later. So traveling and experiences and being on the road became my business card because I wasn't trying to sell people on a product or a service. I was just meeting people because I wanted to, like I was like addicted to like travel. Like I wanted to hear people's stories and how they lived and their accents and where they're from. And because I, I just felt like I was deprived of all this stuff for 24 years, right? So when I got in the world, I'm just like, where are you from? What do you do? Like, what's it like over there? And I think when you just kind of had that natural curiosity for people, it's like infectious and people want to tell your story, their story and they get really excited to tell their story. And when you make someone feel really like understood and seen and cared for in a conversation, people remember that. And I think every opportunity that has been minor and major has been as, as a result of me having a conversation with someone and they just remembered me because, I mean, Instagram has never been a really um, primary tool for me. It's, it allows me to communicate sometimes with people, but like, uh, Time and time again, it's always been like that random message or email being like, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but like we should like work together. I just remember uh, you saying you were like a filmmaker, photographer and stuff. And it was op- in the beginning, it just kind of felt like oh, I was getting like lucky again and then again and again. But like, I mean, if seven years has proven anything, it just keeps happening. And um, my mindset now is just always like when you're with someone, it's really important to be present with them, ask good questions and to um, just be attentive and challenge their ideas and give them even new ideas and it'll just leave them in a place where they're like, wow, I never thought of that. That's a good question. I need to probably unpack that later. And I just feel like for what I do with like my craft, which is filmmaking photography, um, that's what's generated the most opportunity. But with Thor and Tio, uh, Thor came first. Thor came in 2019. Um, he is a little bit more random. I remember seeing a photo of him and Kelsey, his wife. Um, and, uh, 
I didn't know anything about Thor at the time. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. I didn't watch uh, World's Strongest Man. But when you see a photo of this guy, I mean, you've seen Thor. It's just like, wow, what is this human? He's You'll like never seven. Forget, yeah. yeah, seriously. He's all, all seven feet, 450 pounds of just shredded muscle. Like, is this person real? And I remember looking into him and I remember seeing his brand. And you've probably done this too. You look at someone's brand, they're online, they're Instagram, and you're just like, oh, wow, like their branding is not as strong as like their Impressive. name. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So without even kind of thinking about it, I reached out to him just to say hi and told him like, we should like work on something together. Never in a million years, one, did I think he was going to reply, but two, like, I didn't know what I would even do with him, like, even if it went through. I, I don't know why I kind of just shot blindly at it. I just knew that I could probably improve what he had. Um, but he, like, replied to me immediately. And all I said to him was, let's make a video, like, that short. No, like, no exaggeration. That's the message I sent him. And then if you know Thor at all, he's a very short-spoken guy. So he's like, yeah, let's do it. That was his reply to me. <laughs> and you're like, dang. <laughs> and I was like, I remember just looking at my phone. I showed the person that was sitting beside me. I was just like, this guy from Game of Thrones just said he wants to make a video with me. And they're like, what, who is he? And I was just like, he's just like this big guy from Iceland. And I was like, I think I, I don't know what to do here. Like, I don't even know what to respond because I don't even know what I want to do. Like, I literally had no ideas for this person yet. So I kind of did that thing where you flip the table and just like a, so what would you want to do? <laughs> like what, you know what I mean? Like, do you have any ideas? And he replied and uh, he said, uh, I don't, well, I kind of have an idea, but like, why don't you come to, to Iceland for like a little bit and we can talk about it and see if this is a good thing. And I was like, wow. So he flew me out to Iceland for 10 days, very generous guy. And in that 10 days, we kind of became like really good friends. We kind of have this like Shrek and donkey dynamic. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so cool, dude. <laughs> It just makes me think that, uh, like, you only need that, like, that one break, right? Like, uh, before yeah. that, you you never had uh, somebody's call. Actually, Chris called me, Chris Vargas. Oh, Chris. I can't believe he's not listening to the pod right now. I know, like, I'm offended. What's expert. going on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so back, back to the conversation. Like, you need that one shot. Like, just, like, one opportunity that's going to be, like, yeah. you know, that people are going to start, like, like, you're going to put your name out there, right? Yeah. And it all started because you were not scared of reaching out. And yeah. that's what happens to people sometimes. And I say it all the time. Like I've gotten so many opportunities just by reaching out to our people, yeah. just by connecting, just the simple fact of connecting with people. Like if I don't know, if I, I didn't know you, Anthony, and I reach out, yeah. I'm like, hey, dude, like yeah. I just saw your video about uh, mm. Tulum and I loved it. I thought, you know, like I love the attention to detail, blah, blah. Who knows? Mm. Maybe you'll answer. And then from there, we'll kind of like build that connection. And then yeah. you know that I'm in Florida and then you have a project in Florida and then you already have me in the back of, of your head. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's so, um, I think there's a, there's a few takeaways, I would say, with the Thor story where it's just like, one, I think it's important, yes, to like shoot your shot. And two, like you should have things in place so that like if by chance that person does want to look into your work, your profile is probably in a position that can reflect co your quality, right? But the other thing is just like, I think there's a misconception about asking because I think people associate asking with like weakness or something like that. But like, I think a lot of people forget like after a question has been answered and if it's yes, there's a lot of work to be done too, right? It's not like just a, a walk in the park after someone says yes, you got to like go prove yourself and all these things. So I think that people just don't utilize that tool enough. Like, don't be afraid to ask and like, uh, the, the the outcome is not really important if anything it's a numbers game go ask a lot right yeah and and you have no idea how many people because i've i mentioned that on the pod all the time mm. like since episode one i've always um talked about the importance of making connections right around the world yeah. and i've had so many people and this like the coolest part of the whole podcast when people like take things uh, in a positive way and then they make it happen so i've had many people uh, send me DMs like, hey, you know, I, I listened to your pod with, I don't know, let's put it, Anthony Cado. And, <laughs> mm. and, and it really hit me when you said, like, you need to, you know, make connections, reach out to people, don't be scared. Like, mm. most people are going to be willing to help you. Yeah. And because of that, I got this great opportunity with X people, blah, blah. And yeah. dude, that's like the coolest part, you know? Yeah, because, I think. And what I, what I was trying to make out of this podcast is, I want I want to do something that I wanted when I got started in my journey, right? Like mm. I wish there was like, uh, well, I mean specifically like the the first couple of episodes was a lot of CrossFit media mm -hmm. stuff, 
-hmm. So when I got started in, in CrossFit Media and like the whole like sports industry, I really didn't find too many resources of like, hey, um, how how do I do when they're like, what's the access like? What lens should I use? Stuff like that, right? And the people I reached out to, they were kind of like, you know, like it, it was a smaller circle. So it's like harder. So I, I was like, I'm just going to make this platform that people can like reach out and like they can comment it while other people are like live and stuff and yeah and just like you know help people in a positive way i, I, I yeah. think that why is really important because i mean the great i i think my opinion the greatest philosophy for creation is like create the thing that you want right because write write the books you want to read and mm -hmm. make the songs you want to listen true. to make the films you want to watch and i think when you like feel like there's a gap in the market for something that you you're looking for then you just create it and that's what you've done i love that Yeah, and unexpectedly, it's been um, like a huge learning experience for me too because yeah. um, first giving me the, like the one I'm doing right now with you, like episode one, I was like shaking. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like right now I'm like, it, it just chill. I love I love having yeah. a conversation with somebody live. It's like, it for really, sure. it, I, I love it and I feel like relaxed and everything. But that's give, like just starting the podcast, it was such a scary thing. Like I hate being in front of cameras. I hate yeah. Uh, you know, having conversations in public or yeah. or not really in public, but like with a camera, like pointing at you. For right? sure, for sure. And I think, I mean, you seem very at ease right now. You seem very confident. Yeah, and and just like starting this just gave me like a, a boost. I don't know if that's the right word, like a boost of confidence that I can do things that I that I thought I would never be able to do, right? Mm. And, and another thing is that I've learned so much from different guests that I never thought I was going to right like sometimes i have guests that are like that i know in person they're very like quiet and like introverted mm -hmm. and then we get in a conversation they're just like open up and they just drop like a bunch of knowledge bombs and i'm like dude this is so cool that somebody can just uh, you know like open up yeah. and talk like freely about their feelings their their journey and stuff like that and and just learning a lot from them different perspectives like like we've been live for 30 minutes and Yeah, and I already catch things that I know they're gonna help me um, in the future. So it, it's all things that you know, like it started like, clicking, and and I'm like, dude, I'm I'm so glad I'm doing this kind of stuff, and yeah, it just helps absolutely. me. Yeah, good for you, man. That's awesome. I feel like people sometimes forget that repetition builds confidence, right? And it's just absolutely the more you, yeah. the more you do something, the more you feel yeah. You know, I, at ease I, with it. I always mention this quote by Ari Glass hmm. that, um, gosh, I I don't remember. It's long, but it's pretty much that everybody's got like a good idea, a good taste of like what you want to do. What's uh, the, the most important thing is the repetition. Like mm -hmm. just keep doing it until mm -hmm. you achieve what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember reading that when I was on like episode three or four that I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm, yeah. I'm like nervous when I do it. I feel like the episodes are not good. And people mm -hmm. are like, they still like them, but mm -hmm. myself, I wasn't feeling comfortable. Mm. and we're in episode 28 right now and i'm like dude so good this, this is the beginning you know like unreal i'm ready to keep um keep pushing and get to episode 100 and just you know uh, expand, expand my um my list of guests so having you here it's actually pretty good because um i as i mentioned before i focused a lot on the crossfit industry mm. um which is really cool because not many people know about like their lives as i said it's a smaller circle So mm. uh, people are really attracted to that, but I want to expand into more of the filmmaker, uh, filmmaking, photography world. People with different backgrounds, like you, you travel around the world. Mm. You're never in one spot. You've you've done different things, so it's like a fresh perspective for the pod. That's I, why I was like, dude, we have to do it. It will be. I would, yeah, I love it. I mean, uh, filmmaking is always an interesting topic for me, but like, I uh, I learned a couple of years ago when I had to like figure out what what my story was about and. Film, I just kind of discovered like filmmaking was my vehicle, right? Like my, my journey's always been about like going around the world and figuring out what the stories and experiences are that interest me. But fil fil filmmaking and photography has always been like my passport to do that and to meet people and to go places. That, and it's, um, yeah, I, I mean, I could talk forever about just what it's like to be on the road. But I, w I do want to answer the tail end of the last question where after Thor with Teofimo, because they actually tie together and it actually ties into rain and actually leads to kind of how we met In Vegas as well it's kind of cool so after I started working with Thor in Iceland right uh, the 10 days went well and then he's just like hey do you want to like 
build something together. So I built his YouTube channel from like zero to half a million. And then we handed it off to another friend of his. And then I carried on with my life to travel and stuff. And now we stayed good friends and the occasional time I'll travel with Thor. He'll sometimes call me up randomly and be like, Hey, I want you to come on this trip with me and I'll do that. And one day he calls me and he's just like, Hey, I need to be in Los Angeles for a commercial with one of my sponsors rain. And this was about 14 months ago, back in like the, the tail end of the year. And I was like, sure, let's, uh, I'll come to LA for a week with you. And they brought out all the athletes. So you got Natalie, you got the buttery bros, you know, you got the whole team from rain. And we're all staying at the same hotel. And I remember one afternoon I was editing at like 2 p.m. And I was, my room was on the top floor and I was looking out the window down and there's a basketball court at the hotel. And uh, I saw somebody shooting hoops and uh, without getting into my whole history of sports, uh, I love basketball. Basketball has been a part of my life uh, since I was a little kid and I played and coached. And when I saw someone shooting hoops, I was like, I threw on my runners, I ran down the stairs so fast. And I started um, walk, making my way to the court and I realized that it's Tio, Tio Fimo, but I don't actually know who Tio Fimo is because I haven't met him formally yet and stuff. So um, just to play it cool, you know, I just like turn the corner and I'll start walking really casually and slow towards the court. <laughs> and then I walk on there and, you know, we start talking. And it was one of those moments where uh, a small conversation turned into like two and a half hours just talking mm -hmm. life and deep conversation. And we just got along so well. And, you know, at the time I didn't know he was like, this undisputed champ and like all these things and just so accomplished. I just liked who he was as a person, you know? So we started talking and I'm asking him questions and trying to understand who he is and vice versa. And at the end of the week with rain, when we did tough mud and all these things, um, Tio came up to me and it was probably the last time we were going to like see each other. And uh, he's just like, it was nice to meet you and stuff. And all I told him was, um, if and when he's ready to tell his story, I'd love to work with him because he has a really good life story. And uh, one month after we met in LA, he was fighting at Madison Square Garden to defend his belt. And uh, he took his first career loss four weeks after I met him. And he, his life kind of got spun into a different place, you know, like he uh, entered fatherhood for the first time the week of his loss. And the media was kind of crucifying him. And he was going through a really hard time. And he went underground and just kind of disappeared out of the public eye for many months. The fight was in November and no one heard from him for months until the new year. And I remember in 2022, I was living in Iceland. It was June and it was like 11 PM. I see my phone light up. It's a WhatsApp call. And I see the name Teofimo Lopez pop up. Tio's never called me in my entire life. And uh, I pick up the phone and he says, yo, Anthony, it's, it's been a while. I was like, yeah, I haven't, seen or heard from you in forever you, you doing okay what's going on and he says it hasn't been announced publicly yet but uh they're gonna announce my next fight in a month and it'll be my first time returning to the ring since my loss in november i was like man that's crazy and he's and i was like how you feeling all these things and he kind of just cut to the chase he's like yo I've, I've been like thinking about it a lot and i want you to shoot my redemption documentary and i was like what like why, like, why me? Like, I wasn't even known as like a documentary filmmaker at the time. I was like, why me? And he said, I just remember our conversation when we were shooting hoops. And I just liked what you're about and who you are. And I trust you to tell my story. And I was kind of taken back because he was approached by many big producers that like do like 30 for 30 and all this stuff. And he declined all of them and gave me the opportunity solely based on the conversation that we had on a basketball court. And from there, like it happened so fast. I was on an airplane from Iceland to Brooklyn and I jumped into camp with him and I started living with him and his people, his family, his trainers, everything. And I got thrown in the mix. I didn't even know the first thing about boxing. I learned everything by just living that lifestyle with him. I just became his storyteller for so long. And then he went through that fight and it was a, it was like a huge success and all these things. Yeah. yeah. It was a really, really amazing comeback. And, um, the, it's just interesting because I was only in LA where I met Tio through all the time that I spent with Half Thor, right? And yep. I only and I only met Half Thor through just by shooting a simple message to the random stranger at the time. So all these things trickled over the span of like five years, and now I'm about to be with Tio again in a couple of weeks as he fights for a new weight division belt and stuff like that. So life, that's life. that's super dope, dude. Gosh, I love, <laughs> I love stories like that. This is the, the documentary, right? The takeover documentary. Yeah, so this is the first one I did. And actually, 
good timing for our podcast today. I just finished the second documentary yesterday. We sp- that's why I'm in Mexico to answer mm. your question that you haven't asked yet. Um, I I spent the last three weeks here in Mexico with my friend who is helping me edit the film, and we just wanted a place where we could kind of just call it a creative hub and work on this film together. So we finished it, and he just flew back to Germany yesterday. And I'm so excited to put out the second episode because it might be maybe the best thing I've ever produced. I don't even know if I'm, I can say that yet. I'm so critical so of myself. Cool. So I'm going to have to show you the private link after this episode. Yeah. Um, I wish I could show this with sound. Um, yeah. I figure out the sound thing, but I remember watching all this um, in the last couple of days and gosh, dude, it's so good. But yeah, the yeah. sound is what makes it like that much better, right? Like the yeah. The what is what is your relationship with sound design and stuff? Because you're such a good filmmaker too. Like, where are you pretty confident in it, or is that something you still want to grow in? Or like, uh, gosh, that's that's a good question. I I don't I don't know if I've ever like I I feel like I have I have confidence in my work, but at the same time I'm like very self conscious when. When people, you know, like people like you that are so experienced stuff like that, I, I never want to like <laughs> hear Justin says, Carlos, Carlos kills the sound design. <laughs> uh, Justin Tamani is a great dude. He's also in the, um, in the CrossFit industry, but also a good friend. Ah. Uh, so I, I never like to, because I know there's still so much more to learn for me. And like, I, I know I can improve a lot more. So I never want to be like, oh, you know, I'm super comfortable with sound design. I mm. do think I, I have a good ear. Um, I, I grew up as a musician pretty much when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. That was my, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a rock star. Like that was my my dream since I was like nine years old. Mm. So I did develop a pretty good ear. And and I, I think that helps me a lot when it comes to making my videos. I have a good a good sense for like, for for the beat, the tempo. Like sometimes I count I count the tempo to... To make everything a little more like um, seamless and and I do think that gives me like a little advantage because mm-hmm. I understand understand timing a little more than somebody that that's never done music. That's me. Um, I have terrible timing. <laughs> and and I feel like the that that helps me a little bit with sound design because I've never done any sort of like like extensive research when it comes to sound design. It's just kind of like what 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 I think it works well. What I think it's mm. It makes sense in my mind. Um, you know, it's a really good exercise for this. That I, I don't know if you ever tried it, but I did it um, a little while back, and it kind of like it took probably my sound design like tenfold. And it was making a edit or a film solely on sound design, nothing yeah. else. So like you build the ambiance yourself, you build the sounds, the rhythms, the hits, and you just construct this symphony of um, just sound effects, basically. And you make your edit around that. No music, no nothing. And just try to bring it alive that way. It's crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. No, I I love everything about sound design. I think it's what gives the the video life. You know, like it's what makes something alive. And it every time I'm making a video, I feel like I'm like always like, oh, this looks like trash until <laughs> <laughs> until I work on the sound design and then I watch it again. I'm like, okay, yeah. Now now we're talking, right? And I remember one of my uh, my friends, when I was getting started, he was a, a lot more experienced in in filmmaking. He's like, "Hey, I have a question for you. What do you think it's the most important thing about a film?" Mm. And I was like, um, mm. "I was like, I said lighting." He's like, "Okay, that's important. Yeah, for sure." But I I think for me there's something even more important. I'm like, mm. I, I don't know. I thought it was lighting. Like, if mm. you light something mm. well, it's gonna look good. Yeah. He says it's the it's pretty much what what makes the film the film and it's the audio. Yeah. It's what it's what's gonna That's tell cool. you the story. It's what's gonna like put the pieces together of like you have a cool and, and your videos do uh, like it you can see it very well in your videos. That's why I wish I had sound because you have a cool shot in Tulum with like the drone mm. and then you can hear you can almost feel like you're there, right? Mm. And that's because of the audio, the, the sound effect. And that. you know, underwater and all that stuff. So I, I, I try to really focus on that. I, I don't think I ever, I, I, I'm, I don't mm. ever make videos anymore that don't have some sort of sound design. For sure. And Someone I tell could... my friends so many times. I've, I have friends that make so many like cool stuff, and I'm like, dude, sound design. Like 
this video will be one of the best videos I've ever watched. It's like, oh, well, mm. I didn't have that much time. I was putting the, putting it together in my mind. Yeah. I'm like, you just yeah. made a video that could have been a 9.8. And yeah. it's like a 5.6 because it doesn't have the sound. That's right. Sound is, yeah, once you learn that in filmmaking, it kind of is like a mind-blowing like breakthrough because someone put it very plainly to me that to, very easy to understand. You can watch a horribly aesthetic film and still want to watch it because the sound is good. But if you find a beautiful film and the audio is bad, you'll turn it off. Because like if you're watching like a vlog and you can't hear the person speak, then why would you want to watch that? Right. Yeah. And we all we've all seen like a vlog that has terrible cinematics, but like the story is good, the audio is good. You'll still watch it for sure. So audio is over half the experience, I would say. Yeah. And I had a class in college that I forgot the name, but it was some like movie sound something and it, it really like after that class like i could never watch a movie with the same mindset because i will always be focusing on the sounds and and i'm like dude it really changes the whole thing it, it's so important um but uh back to your question um if you watch any of my crossfit videos like the, um, mm. the highlights of the day i mm. try to add as much sound as possible i like take sound from like the announcer yeah. Just introducing the day, like in the back, you hear the crowd and stuff like that. And I just feel like that just gives, um, like people are watching, they're going to feel like, oh, you know, mm. like I was there for a second. Yeah. So I think what, it's super important. What, uh, how would you describe like your filmmaking style? Like what kind of choice of words or vocabulary you would use to describe the way you make films? Gosh, these are all questions I wasn't prepared to answer. Uh, <laughs> I don't honestly, I love it. it I, I gotta I gotta think about that one, but uh, I don't know. I don't I don't think I I told you like I don't consider myself like anything specifically. Um, it just kind of what I'm feeling the, at the moment. It's it's very natural. Um, I I do like to get better storytelling. I think that um, mm. I I still have like a lot of room to grow there because I do struggle when it comes to when I when I have to like a longer longer form like documentary yeah. or like storytelling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do i I've, i haven't been to a point that i feel like comfortable that i'm like oh i know i'm gonna crush this right it, yeah. it takes a lot of time a lot of learning and but you know that's another cool thing about it like i've been doing this for for almost uh five years full time and yeah and i feel i still think that i have so much more growth ahead that it's yeah. kind of like exciting you know because the more i do it the more i know that i'm gonna keep learning and for sure I think yeah. um, I think it's an interesting question to pose if you make films for yourself because it's kind of like the question in the beginning. It's just like you're trying to oversimplify something. But I mean, I think you're very zoomed out on the, your answer. I think when you kind of look a little bit closer, the way you edit and the way you shoot and compose a shot, um, there are patterns probably. Like there are th things that you'll do. You'll have tendencies that you'll do it over and over again. And I'll give you an example, you know, like um, something about the way I shoot that I find over and over again over the years, it's like a lot of my shots are very minimalistic, like quite simple. Like I don't do anything flashy or crazy, extravagant, effects heavy. Um, if you watch any of my stuff, I always call it vanilla because it's quite boring. Like my, my stat, my shots are quite static. I'm not a gimbal guy at all. Like I really like my frames and compositions to be quiet and still. And so like, if you just watch any of like my clips, I would probably describe it as minimalistic or just, um, qu quiet. And some people like love dynamic shots. They're like running with gimbals low to the ground and transitions and stuff. So there's probably attributes that you have in your mm -hmm. edits or your ways of shooting where that could be described into your ways of filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. Now thinking about it, when it comes to my sports stuff, I'm definitely more in the fast paced dynamic stuff. I, I love doing keyframes, just um, mm. kind of making, making a lot out of nothing. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I have some, some shots that I'm like, oh, I might not be able to use this, but I started trying to figure out like the way I crop it or using yeah. the same shot twice, but um, using it in a completely different way. One being wide and then one being so tight that you can even, it, it almost mm -hmm. looks like it's a different frame when I don't have yeah. that much footage. Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, when it comes to sports stuff, I would definitely say it's, I would definitely say it's very fast paced, quick cuts, um, key frames. I try to, it's funny you mentioned the the transitions because I I try not to make any transitions. Mm. Uh, sometimes the clients are like, "Hey, you know, can you like <laughs> add a call?" And I'm like, "Gosh, I it just yeah. I feel like it looks so much better if you if you try to transition it by just the you know the hard cuts, right?" Yeah. And 
but yeah, I mean, what what I think it's cool is that um, it just like I, I feel like it's my own style. I, I yeah. do take inspiration from other people, of course, but but it does feel very very like me. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. I was just, uh, I was I was just gonna ask like, do you um, do you feel like your filmmaking style or your creative style is a direct reflection of like your personality? I feel like there's a strong correlation for people there. Yeah. I, I think so. Um, you you mentioned earlier that you have a very ob- ob- obsessive personality. You're yeah. like a- addicted to to getting better. Yeah. And one of my best friends like always told me he's like, I'm glad you don't touch drugs, dude, because you be <laughs> addicted yeah. quick. Because I'm like that too. Yeah. When I obsess with something, I'm yeah. all in. Yeah. And and that's yeah. why I feel like I got I got really like I got a lot better when I first like <laughs> dive into photography and videography because I was just obsessed with it. Like I just Absolutely. couldn't couldn't stop. I'll be all day in my computer just watching mm-hmm. all the videos, and then friends would be like, "Dude, how do you, how do you <laughs> like, how do you make this video so quick? Like, yeah, you started out that long ago. Like, tell me the secrets." I'm like, Dude, "There's that's the thing. There's no secrets. You just gotta exactly do the work." And I, I always say like I love I love helping people, and I love when people ask me questions. Like mm-hmm. I love answering and helping as much as possible. What bothers me is when people try to take the shortcuts, right? Oh, like, yeah. and you yeah. know what I mean? There's it's a really difference. hard to help those people. Yeah, yeah, there is a difference when somebody asks you something, you know they're being honest, the legitimate want to like learn, mm-hmm. and then people are just trying to like take the easy mm-hmm. route and just get there like faster. And the reality in filmmaking and photography and content creation in general is that uh, there's really no shortcuts. Like it might work for one project, but then you're yeah. going to be lost for the next one, right? You just got to learn from ground zero and just go from there. 100%. Well said. Let me let me go to your IG real quick. Oh, geez. Yeah, oh, here it is. Let me share it with the screen. Dude, so you, I know you say that you're, you know, you're a filmmaker, you see everything in film, but your photos are insane too, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Like the photos that you take, they're very cool. Thank you. Just I, showing like stuff like this, like you just you just have that you know that eye, that composition, like perfect sample of a minimalistic mm. image that just you see it and you're like, "Yep, this is dope." <laughs> Thank you. I I don't I never know what to do in these situations. I like malfunction. It's like compliments. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the same, dude. When somebody tells me like, "Oh, I love your work," I'm like, uh, "Yeah, okay. yeah." Like my eye starts twitching. Like, like it oh, means okay. it means a lot to me, but I don't know what to <laughs> what to say. What's your so when you take stuff like this, what's your editing process like? Uh, it's actually quite consistent because I found something that works for me. So I like to remove the color and introduce it in my own way. So I'll, oh, okay. I'll remove vibrance. I'll almost take it to some of these images I've taken for this collection right here. I've taken the color up to black and white and I introduced all the colors myself because I wanted to control the environment and the palette. Um, that I was just going through a phase at that time where I wanted to play with these like these icy tones and stuff like that and i just found that the natural environment is just too vibrant and um Mm -hmm. but like my my something i consistently do is that like i really like try to emulate film colors because i'm just obsessed with that kind of palette and there's like kind of this like imperfection to film colors that i love so i mean and a lot of it i just try to follow cinema stuff too just like two or three tones that are complementary and yeah Yeah, this i mean so good like this video we're watching right now it's the one i was mentioning about tulum it just it looks so like cinematic and you said like simple but with the sound that's why everybody's watching you gotta go and watch this with the sound it just gives you a whole different perspective and it's a great example of like this video like you see it right now you're like well you know it's it's very good like cinematic the colors are good the composition it's very very good but with the sound it's what it's like gives you the goosebumps yeah i sometimes i like romanticize making films like someone like you because you're so dynamic and fast-paced like when i make these edits i'm like this is so boring there's no movement or anything like that and uh i just like i always have to find a way to add dynamics into my edits because i really like static shots like Dude, really, I, was, really. I was absolutely jealous last night watching all this <laughs> i was like gosh i can't even show the the one of theo right now because it's sideways <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Dude, that one's so good. Like, thank you. There's that... some parts that that he's like dancing on the 
whenever he's like training, I transition yeah. him dancing on the actual um, when he won. And yeah. I'm like, gosh, dude, it's so good. Like, thank you. I have you ever posted something in your feed where you're like, oh, this is kind of off brand, and I don't know if anyone's gonna even like this because it's so different. That was my Tio video. Like posting yeah. that video Tio, I made it, and I was like, I'm so passionate about what I made here because I made it out of flow. I didn't make it for him. He doesn't even mm -hmm. he didn't even post it. I made that at a, one of those midnight sessions where it just inspiration's high, and yep. I was like, wow, this is like sweet. I don't know if I should post this because it's not tourism work. It's not really anything. And nobody really even knows who he is on my audience or anything like that. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, I was just like, it's inspiring to me. I'm just going to post it because that's what I feel Absolutely. right now. And it ended up being for the longest time up to that point, the, my highest performing engagement really? thing. And wow. I was like, oh, that should tell me something. Like one, I don't know what's best for me. I should just follow my instincts for what yeah. inspires me. But yeah, thank you for saying that. I, I really yeah. appreciate that. And another thing probably is that people follow you because of, of, your filmmaking skills the person that you are and not because of the beautiful landscapes that you that you have mm -hmm. right and i think in in uh, i do a lot of stuff other than crossfit but my page is pretty much mainly that yeah. uh but I, i've been trying to like figure out a way that people know who i am because of the work that i do and not because of the athletes that i post mm. like it, it's very easy to to get caught up in like oh i'm gonna Post a very uh, attractive athlete right. in a in a pretty cool CrossFit movement that you know looks awesome and people are gonna like that, right? Yeah. So I've been trying to figure out a way that I can show my art in in this photography, like you know, yeah. app or video, whatever. But that that makes that makes it a lot like I don't even know how to explain it. In my, in my I, head, I, it makes, I get it though. In my head, I, it makes sense. I think what, so. People know, like, okay, this is style. This is the, this is what yeah. he does for photography. Not right. oh, this is the guy that takes photos of X person. Right. You know I, what I mean. Th there is a way to harmonize that. If we're talking about like Instagram and stuff, I mean, my my mindset with that stuff has always been like uh, like um, uh, two for them, one for me, sort of thing. You build a ratio that works for you, where it's just like uh, I'm gonna post them or make them something. But then I have to make something that's true to me and yep. share something that's true to me. And, it, Absolutely. and I'm one that really hates like posting about myself on social media. That's why there's almost no photos of me on my feed at all. But once in a while, it's important because I feel like, especially if you're trying to build something where people need to know you, um, you do have to be really intentional about it. And I think it's fine once in a while. It might be a problem if you do it every single post every day all yeah. year. But I was just yeah. going to mention that that's something I changed last year. I started... With the same idea of like, you know, I want to post more stuff that people know who I am as a as a creator and not um, not that they just like the photos that I post, right? Yeah. And, and I started like sharing a little more of my journey. Obviously, the podcast helps. Mm -hmm. um, I started sharing more photos about myself, like, you know, my, my story growing up, like moving from a from a from from South America to the States when I was 17 years old, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And and that's really helped me. Well, first, just to feel more like myself, right? Like it's like yeah. okay, people get to know who I am, mm. but also it helps. It's helped my my brand, if you put it this way. Um, yeah, for people to know, like future clients who they're gonna be working with, or like the the person they're interacting with. Mm. And because before, I mean, two thousand twenty, my Instagram was like a a business, right? Right. I had my business logo. Never posted a photo about myself. People didn't mm. even know how I looked. Um, yep. And I remember one of my friends, in fact, his name is Anthony as well. <laughs> He's like, dude, the moment I switch my stuff to my name and, and I started mm -hmm. like telling people who I was, my business just went mm -hmm. straight up. Mm -hmm. And, and it kind of, yeah, it kind of made sense to me. And it's because people like real, right? People mm -hmm. like yeah. that. They, they like to have a face. They like to have yeah. a connection yeah. with the person. And it's pretty cool, man. Like I, I, I know uh, social media has a lot of negatives uh, because of like people get consumed uh, with it, mm. but gosh, we're so um, it's so cool to live in a in a <laughs> in a era or a year that that we can connect with so many people through Instagram, and then I can like you know have conversations with people around the world, mm. and just because we connected because of the things that we do, the art that we create, or yeah. or the videos yeah. that we make, so that you know, well, I like. Think it's to kind of better, I mean, because I, I mean, I want to 
learn more about you, but I don't want to take like five hours out of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. But but like, where are you today with like your journey with like as an artist and a creative and stuff like that? Are you somewhere where you feel like you're at the early building stages still, or you found like, feel like you have momentum and you you found your footing? Like, where are you in the context of like your artist journey? Yeah, dude, that's such a good question because I think about that often. Like, I feel like I have a uh, great momentum right now since last year. Like, um, it's almost like, dude, like it, it gives me like, like chills sometimes when I think about like things that I accomplished last year that, that I put in my mind that I'm like, Hey, I want to do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and like things happen. And, and, you know, even probably more than I was expecting, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it keeps me so, so grounded that I know, like I'm ne nowhere near where I want to be and when it comes to my skills like things that i want to like be a part of and everything so it, it's such a cool like i feel like i'm in a cool transition from being like hey i know i can do this but at the same time i know that i'm i'm here and i can be here in 12 mm -hmm. months right mm -hmm. so it, it's a pretty cool i think i'm in, in, a, in a like mentally i'm in a really good um how you say like a good space yep. i guess because i feel i feel comfortable with the work i'm doing And I'm excited about what's next because I know I know I can still get a lot better. Mm, I love that. You seem so, to have a very clean mindset about like yeah. where you're at and where you're heading. Yeah, uh, it's been, dude, it's, it's crazy because um, to you, and I, I, I hate saying this sometimes because people are going to be like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, whatever. But if so, two years ago you would have said, hey, you're going to be doing what you're doing right now, I mm. uh, would have been kind of like, dude, sounds yeah. crazy right but yeah but uh, you know it made it happen and and at the same time i always mention like you just gotta be proud of yourself and the things you've accomplished because at the end of the day like nobody gave me this nobody came to me with like this opportunity like oh here yeah. like this is gonna happen right um yeah I, i'm really proud of like the things i've accomplished for you know? sure and I, there is a there is these words yeah um Sorry, sorry to cut you off there. I was just going to add to what you were saying yeah. because it, I, before it slipped my mind where someone said to me once where they put it very simple into simple words, like what you have today was something that you asked or prayed for not too long ago. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's a kind of a crazy realization yeah. because especially when you're on a journey where you're building your own thing, it's just like you have these luxuries that, that now that you couldn't have fathomed not that long ago. Yeah. I mean, it just and makes you feel so grateful. Absolutely. And that's what I was going to say. Like, you got to be proud of where you are and also absorb, like, really understand where you're at. Because once you reach that point, they're like, hey, I wanted to work with these clients or I wanted to go to this event. When you're at that point, you don't realize that, hey, this is what I've been waiting for for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 a good it's a good time to like you know not take it for granted and really understand like hey mm. you 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 did this and it was because of the hard work you know um mm. and it's not it's nothing to happen overnight obviously but that's why i tell everybody like dude, there's there's so many like people are just getting started and they're always like oh my god like mm. how do you get to like shoot for x person mm. And I'm like, just don't rush it. Like, keep doing your mm -hmm. thing. Like, I see that you're very, very focused on what you want to do, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You have a good eye. You're talented. Just keep grinding. Put, mm -hmm. you know, set set high goals and keep improving. And eventually you're going to get there whenever you expect it the least, you know. Mm -hmm. I have yeah, a good question for you that I always ask my, my friends ready. that have, um, well, I don't know if it's a good question, but in my mind it is. So you've... <laughs> It, it might be something like putting you on the spot because it, it, I think it's kind of hard to answer. Try me. Try me. So um, you've worked with Tio. You've worked with Thor. You've traveled the world. You have a very awesome lifestyle. Let's put it that way. You're very talented. You're a great filmmaker. Why you? What, what is the question? Why you? Why were you the, like, the person that was chosen to be in, in this awesome lifestyle with uh, shooting for... Thor and for Tio, what makes you special that it was you, the person that got pretty much, you know, selected to be this guy? Um, that's a good question. I mean, my mind is going to a place to answer this. That's one, a long story, but basically I've never felt like uh, I was like a chosen one. I mean, I was literally chosen to work with these guys, but like I, I what I mean by that is um, because of the way I was raised and my conversation with myself in my mind, um, It's not a 
good conversation. It comes from like a very, a pl- like a place of lacking, low self-esteem, low self-worth. And um, I've just never really viewed myself as that. I always describe to people like the seven year journey that's been very colorful. It feels like I've been casted for a movie that I wasn't meant to be casted for. Like every day I'm always like, do I, I really get to do this? Do I really get to work with this person? Do I really have this business? Yeah. Do I re- do I-? And it just feels like this crazy imposter syndrome that we all kind of feel in some ways when we build this life. But when it comes to answering more directly your question, like why, it's just everyone, I, I, I don't understand it myself, but I've actually had the moments where I could ask people like Thor. Actually, when I was sitting beside you at dinner in Vegas, me and Thor had a real conversation really quick. And I asked him, I, I thanked him because I was there with Tio and uh, the last time I was with Rain, I was with Thor and I was just like, hey man, like, you know, I'm just here tonight because you took a shot on me. And he said, I didn't take a shot on you. You earned it. You, mm. you're, good, you're a good guy and you work hard and everybody loves you and you're here because you're supposed to be here. And uh, that kind of like took me back because it was such a fleeting conversation. Yeah. But um, I'm lucky to have some of these guys or these people in my life that have said that they've chosen me because of everything besides my skill set. Because I already know I'm not the most talented filmmaker in the world. I just think people choose to work with me because of the types of conversations we have in the ways that I like to press their ideas and um, their beliefs. Because I just feel like people need to be challenged and I love to be challenged. And if you're into that, it's really an energetic conversation to have because it's just like, there's so much back and forth. Very much so like this, you know, we could literally go on for like another four hours effortlessly. Yeah. So I don't know, I, I, the short answer, I don't feel like I'm chosen, but like I feel I get these opportunities because I'm willing to talk to these guys very in a, like the most normal they can be. Like I, I am the least qualified to work with Tio and Thor. I don't know their careers. I don't know their accolades. I just liked them and I treated them like that. Oh God. Jesse Scooper <laughs> says, Anthony's so dreamy. Yeah. I don't know who the stranger is. <laughs> <Just joking. laughs> He's a good friend. <laughs> He's a very, also very good filmmaker. We have good filmmakers in this circle. I see that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, dude, I love, I love that answer. It's, um, it's something I ask myself to, and it yeah. goes back to, yeah, it, go, it goes back to, what you said, I feel like um, I feel like people know I'm honest when I talk to them, um, especially in a work setting, like yeah. clients and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and and I feel like people feel that energy that it's like, hey, this person is mm. really trying to help. He's trying to, mm. you know, like he's he's full value. invested, yeah, full invested into this project, and that helps me a lot. And and I've had this conversation conversation with many good friends that also have that have been very, you know, blessed to work with awesome clients. And mm-hmm. it's like, uh, why, why me? Like there's, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people trying right. to shoot for this client specifically and mm-hmm. this guy specifically. And why am I the one that's, you know, at that position? Mm-hmm. And, and that just, you know, like every time somebody's like, you know, feeling down on yourself and stuff like yeah. that. You gotta think about like yeah. the little, the little things you've accomplished that you yeah. really take for granted just because you're thinking about so much ahead. I, like, I I could sit right now and be like, hey, my, you know, I have right here on the on my board. I want to take the podcast to one thousand yeah. subscribers on YouTube, mm. right? Yeah. And and I could sit down and just be like, oh my gosh, you know. But but I, at the same time, like I can sit down and be like. I'm at a 200 and something subscribers. I'm only mm-hmm. 28 episodes in. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the value I've taken from this is ex- like, it's much greater than having a number that says a thousand subscribers. 100%. 100%. I actually have a story related to the question you just asked. It just came to my mind as you were, uh, you were speaking, it inspired something where my first client um, ever when I was figuring out who I was with the camera was uh, Aston Martin. I was very lucky that my first client was a very prestigious company. And I remember this guy named Greg. He was the guy that kind of brought me in. I emailed them cold and he asked me to come into their office in Auckland, New Zealand. And he basically told me, hey, we're releasing a new car to the world. Would you like to film it, the, the whole event? And I was like, and I'm just a backpacker kid. I literally was just doing nothing at the time traveling and uh he took a shot on me 
right? He took a big, big, big bet on me. This is a global event with like the CEO and the CFO coming into the country and a grand reveal. And I did the event and it went well and they called me back for more projects and it was the craziest start to my journey. And I remember I got to talk to Greg, the guy that brought me and asked him like, why me? Like, you know, like literally I'm so unqualified. I had like a Canon 80D, you know, like I shot an Aston Martin event with a Canon 80D. And I remember I pulled him aside. I was just like, I need to know like why. And all he said was just like, I see myself in you. And I think that's why a lot of us get chosen, right? There's some part of your story that you tell or that people see and they see themselves in you. And that's what makes a good story. You tell a good story, people will resonate with the part that they feel they're, they're, they're in. So I've, so I think that answers your question. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool, dude. I love that. Lisa Tomlin says he's the chosen. He's chosen because he's a great guy, for sure. <laughs> oh, Lisa. <laughs> um, Hi, Lisa. Yeah. So um, I have a. I'm I'm the media director for a, for a local competition here in Florida. It's yeah. a pretty big competition. I think every. Yeah. This past year, I hired I think thirteen. 13 media members to shoot the comp. Wow. So 13. I'm at, I'm at a point that I can, you know, that uh, people reach out to me asking, Hey, you know, like I would love to shoot mm. the, the competition. Right. Mm. And every year I choose one or two new ones that they really want to probably just want, they really want to be a part of, they want to be involved. They pretty much like a volunteer spot, but mm. because they're brand new. Yeah. And, and and I was thinking that the other day, and I talked to uh, that person too that I chose. I'm like, why why do I pick people? Because I feel like so many people reach out to me with the same, hey, I want to be a part of Beach World next year. I want to be, you know, I want to mm. shoot with you guys. Mm. And everybody, like, it's always like, okay, you know, they want to do it. But there's always one person specifically that reaches out to me every year that just kind of like, it's like a light bulb that I'm like, um, can you jump on a call? Like, can we talk more about this? Like, I want to, I want to know more about you. And it, it's so interesting because it's not like they reach out with a different like text or anything, mm-hmm. but there's something special about some people. Maybe the, the way they choose some words or, or know, like following, following up and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it just kind of like sparks like interest on them. And I, I've always thought like, it's so interesting. Like why, like why some people? Well, I and, think that, it, we think, had let, let me finish this part no no go sorry I'm, I'm gonna forget and we had this pretty cool moment last year that we all went to the beach like everybody in the media team and it was like late and you know like the stars and all that so we kind of got in our feelings and we we're talking about um you know about like our journey stuff like that mm. and and she talks about you know like oh you know i want to thank carlos for this opportunity like i would have never it's, i don't know some like being very humble and and i said like Take this opportunity and be proud of it because it's something that you you really you earned. Like, mm. yeah, I'm giving you opportunity, but you earn it in some way. Like you you're here for a reason. Mm. I have a lot of people reaching out and you're the one that I saw some sort of like mm. really good uh I, I don't know if future is the right word, but like I saw a lot of potential that you could help us and and take it from there. Like be proud of it. You earn it. It's nothing that I'm giving it to you. And the best thing about that is that, like, usually those people, like, really, they really do well in the industry. Mm. Um, the first one I gave my first opportunity, first year ever, his name is Bennett Looper. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. No. Um, he's one of the, he's one of the filmmakers for uh, Ma- CrossFit Mayhem, which is one of the biggest um, okay. organizations in CrossFit. Yeah. And that's how he got started. He reached out to me. He didn't have any CrossFit um, a portfolio or anything. Uh, but his work was pretty good. He was a young guy, the way he reached out to me mm. and I gave him an opportunity. And then from there, dude, it's almost like, you know, I love he that. just, just saw his potential and never stopped. And right now he's, you know, he's doing it at the highest level. The dude is incredible. He's 24, I think 24 years old and he's crushing it. Right. So it, it just, it's so cool dude, to see stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I was going to say like, being able to have hired people in the past too, I learned a couple of things where we live in a new era of like hiring, right? In like this new generation of HR almost where um, it's not the most dazzling degree or piece of paper with the accomplishments anymore. It's people are hiring off chemistry because you want to work with people that 
make it enjoyable. You know what I mean? And you can yeah, teach technical 100%. skills. And, and at least in our world, you probably wouldn't do that with like a surgeon. <laughs> but like it, with what we do, you want to be with people that they can be a, a little bit lower in the, the skill um, side, but like they are a good person. They have, you have good chemistry. That's fun. They're eager to learn, curious, all these things. And that w- it wasn't like that, that um, not so long ago, right? Like think about like 20 years ago, 40 years ago, people aren't hiring like that. So we live in this like new way of like um, giving people opportunity. And I mean, I, that's how I approach it. Cause I I'm betting on people now that in a similar way where people have bet on me. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Uh, nobody wants to work with somebody that's like, you know, giving bad vibes and like always complaining about stuff. So that that's super important. <laughs> yeah. Dude, one hour, 10 minutes. Uh, Anthony, I can't thank you enough for joining me on this conversation. As, as I mentioned earlier, like best part of all these episodes that I get to learn a lot and I know people listening are also going to, you know, be learning a lot. And, and the, the, con- the the value that you provide is it's awesome, dude. And, you know, I, I really appreciate your time. You know, usually I try to cut it at one hour. Mm. But the conversation was like really good. And yeah. now I'm like, ah, let's give it a little longer. So For I really sure. appreciate your time and, you know, just sharing your story with us. And hey, you know, this was, was yeah. this was um really fun. And I got to say, I've done uh, a few episodes and I, you have a natural thing for this like this is very easy for, for seemingly very easy for you and uh you're very like good at carrying a conversation and asking questions so i appreciate, appreciate it dude. i try to as i mentioned before we jumped in i try to make it a conversation not an interview because mm-hmm. try not to i don't prepare any questions i just kind of like go with the flow mm-hmm. but yeah the same I, I knew it was going to be a good conversation from like the time we had uh in person at, mm-hmm. at dinner that one time i'm like you know he's one of those that that's not scared of like sharing uh, his sure. perspective so pretty cool and dude i would love to have you uh, another time you know like uh you're doing really cool stuff and i'm sure you're gonna keep crushing it, and then hopefully we can do a part two Man. episode at some point anytime i feel like we haven't even scraped the surface yeah i, I said yeah i can talk for another hour i just want to respect, <laughs> <laughs> I respect yeah. your time but yeah anthony um thank you so much everybody listening i really appreciate you know um supporting uh if you're watching on youtube Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to try to, again, I took a little time off, but this year I'm going to try two episodes every week. I know I have a couple of weeks traveling back to back, so I don't know if I'll have time, but definitely, you know, I'm trying to be consistent. Uh, subscribe, follow us on Instagram. If you want to follow Anthony, it's at Anthony K. Doe. If you want to follow me, it's at Bound Media. Um, Anthony, before we cut it, what's next for you? What's next is um, I just finished this major film which i'm excited to share with you in the world and then i might have a few weeks before i start going back into camp with tia Fimo. and who knows there might be some japan in the cards there might be some central america in the cards we'll see things get picked up like 48 hours before i go somewhere i'm very yeah like uh, winging it so very dope what's the name of the film uh this new one it's called gordo and uh okay that's his nickname it- right yeah him. oh yeah you do know that that's crazy yeah. yeah a lot of people don't know that that's why i titled it because you have to yeah. figure out what the name means when he fights he has the gordo on the back of his that's the name yeah. he grew up with yeah. which is kind of like a nod to like his upbringing so it's kind of a hero's journey storytelling of tiafimo lopez dope i'm excited when it said uh when it's getting released so people can watch it we're still figuring out the release date but i mean depending on when you put out this uh, episode or actually i don't even know how that works out um maybe a couple of weeks probably yeah yeah, I'll put it on Spotify right when we cut the, the broadcast. Appreciate it. So, Appreciate yeah. it. So yeah, everybody listening, make sure you watch uh, Gordo in a couple of weeks by Anthony K. Doe. And yeah, I'm excited to watch it, dude. I can't wait. But um, do you have anything else you want to share with um, everybody? Or No, I just want to say thank you to you and anyone that came to hang out. And uh, I love these things. Conversations and questions really uh, fire me up. So I'm Absolutely, grateful. dude. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Later.